We want to say a special greeting of welcome to those among us who are our visitors and our guests. If you are here in CCF Center for the first time, we want you to know that we are extremely grateful to our Lord that He has allowed you to be here today. And we want to just prove to you how special you are by letting you know that there's a, a room dedicated to serve you. After this worship service, we'd like to invite all of our guests and those who brought them to our welcome center. Our welcome center is located just outside the auditorium here on the second floor. So please, after the worship service, make time to visit the welcome center. We will give you information about CCF. We will give you free coffee and food. People will be waiting for you there, smiling. And if, you're, if you have any questions about CCF or about the Bible or why it is that we do what we do, or perhaps there's a burden in your heart and you want somebody to just listen and pray for and with you, we'll be certainly very privileged, honored, and happy to do that. So please, visitors and guests and those who brought them, and even if you just walked in by yourself, please, if you're a guest, uh, visit our Welcome Center after the worship service. Let me give you an update as far as CCF Tulong Tayo is concerned. CCF Tulong Tayo is our effort by the grace of God to help those who have been uh, ravaged by Typhoon Yolanda. The updates are as follows. As of today, we have received by the grace of God over 12 million pesos donations in cash and in kind. Shall we applaud the Lord for His amazing work through so many people? Uh, we, there were 12,000 family care packs sent to Tacloban just this week, and there will be 22,000 family care packs to be sent to Eastern Samar in the coming week. And just recently, there was a, uh, sorry, there, there was uh, 74 counselors that they were deployed to Villamor. And just recently, over 400 patients were treated and ministered to by a medical mission team in Tacloban just the past week, and I believe they arrived only last night. And you'll see some photographs of what exactly happened with that particular segment of our ministry as far as these needy people uh, are concerned. So please, if you, if you want to help in whatever way the Lord leads you and burdens you, these are the hotlines and the ways for you to register, to give, to give of your time, of your resources, or a combination thereof. If you want to volunteer to help out, you can also sign up online uh, through, the, through the site that's up there on the screen. As you saw in the very brief second video just a while ago, there is going to be the Leadership Conference, a CCF event, CCF Leadership Conference 2014. The dates are January 24 and 25 next year here at the CCF Center. Our speaker for the conference is our brother Robert Morris, and he will be talking about how to experience how to live a truly blessed life. Would you like to learn how to live a blessed life? I certainly would. So please make time for the leadership conference. There will also be 12 exciting workshops in that same conference. And you may now start purchasing your tickets for the leadership conference in January 2014. They are now priced at the early bird rate of 500 pesos only. So please do not wait for the last minute. Register early, get your tickets, because if you, meet, if you miss the early bird rate, obviously the rate will go up, and then you will become the angry bird, not the early bird. Okay. So please, no, seriously, don't wait till the last minute. Sign up today. If you want to be used by God, make a beeline for that uh, here at the small group booth just outside on the second floor. Let me now make this final announcement for today before we pray and commit our speaker and our time and, uh, well, the word of the Lord to its author. The CCF leadership wants to make an announcement regarding a foundation called the Orange Project and its former executive director and chairman, Mr. A.C. Ong, who is a CCF member. For those of you who do not know about the Orange Project, it is a foundation that was founded to help poor children in the Angono area. Now, to be clear, 
the Orange Project is not a CCF accredited foundation and has no formal ties with CCF. However, many of its directors and donors are from CCF. Last September 24, 2013, the Board of Directors of the Orange Project issued a letter to all of its donors in connection with financial improprieties involving the Orange Project. Their letter confirmed that there had been anomalies in the handling of their funds and that these anomalies are, and I quote from the letter, the sole and primary culpability of one director, specifically Mr. A.C. Ong, their former executive director and chairman. And attached to the letter was the signed letter of A.C. Ong acknowledging his accountabilities. The main reason why this is being announced is the fact that AC is a member of CCF who has been visible and active in various activities, not the least of which was leading a small group as well as the Phil Chai segment of the Singles Ministry which described themselves as friends. And while we have earlier said that this foundation has no formal ties with CCF, the CCF leadership sincerely apologizes for such an event happening in our midst. The sad turn of events is a clear example of the danger of fundraising activities done by other organizations among CCF members without the clear endorsement or approval of the CCF pastoral leadership. As we have emphasized during our gathering of the various pastoral areas, we strongly discourage any fundraising activity in D groups, in the church, and among members without the endorsement of your area pastor or an official endorsement letter from the CCF leadership. If there is any fundraising activity that takes place in your small group or is addressed to you as an individual, we suggest you consult your area pastor. As for AC, we want everyone to know that we love him and we forgive him just as the Lord Jesus Christ loves and forgives us. And we therefore ask you to extend the same grace to him. We understand, however, that the rebuilding of trust is another matter altogether and that this will certainly take time. But meanwhile, we have asked AC to desist from all his ministry activities and we have started the process of accountability and restoration for him. May the Lord graciously bless and protect his people for his name's sake. Shall we bow our heads and our hearts in prayer together? Lord, it is by no accident that we have been discussing the fact that you are a sovereign God. And Lord, in all things that happen, in, a, in the privacy of our lives, in the context of your church, even among the nations and throughout the world, O oh Lord, indeed, these are overseen and in control of your sovereign hand. We thank you, God, that in your sovereignty, we can find great comfort and great assurance, bright hope for today, and certainly even greater and brighter hope for tomorrow. Father, we thank you that you are over all things and that you are over all of your people. And today, Father, we want to pray for AC. We pray that your love and grace shall overflow into his heart and into his life. And that through us, your people, this love and grace will be made manifest to him as well. And we pray that your love, your grace and power will just restore and transform him to be the person that you want him to be and to do the things that you have prepared in advance for him to do. And so, Lord, this afternoon, we also pray for your servant, our pastor Peter, whom you have chosen to speak your word to us. And we pray that you will fill him with your Holy Spirit and that he will speak no more and no less than exactly what you want him to say. And as we listen to your word, Lord, may our minds, our hearts, and yes, even our physical bodies be completely surrendered to what you will have us hear and to what you will have us do as a result of your word. So we commit this time to you, O sovereign Lord. Indeed, you and you alone are the God who reigns forever and ever in Jesus' name and all of your people said. Amen and amen. Pastor Peter. Good afternoon. Can you turn to your neighbor, look at them in the eyes, and say, welcome. Good afternoon. 
You know, I'm not convinced you are really serious in welcoming your neighbor. One more time, look at them in the eyes and say, I really welcome you. How many of you were here yesterday to attend the parenting seminar? Raise your hand, wave at me. Praise God. You know, it is one of those amazing seminars when you have almost 7,000 uh, people attending. And the good news is we're going to have that again next year. And may I remind you, January is coming. And when January comes, what is the first thing we do? We fast and pray. So if I were you, enjoy your food now. By January, what are we going to do? Fast and pray. After fasting and praying, we're going to have leadership training. And that is open to all. And I want you to sign up. And after that general leadership training, there will be another leadership training one week after, but it's by invitation only. But all of you now, you attend the leadership training in January. Okay with you guys? All right. <clears throat> How many of you like submission to authority? <laughs> I don't know about you. I don't like submitting to authorities. If you don't believe me, just look at your children. When my children were growing up, the first thing I have to teach them is obey. Because by nature, we don't like to obey. It's counterintuitive. It's against our human nature to obey. But obedience is very important. For example, I know you struggle with obedience. You are with a company. You don't like your boss. He is unreasonable. In fact, in your mind, you are better than him. He comes up with business ideas and you think, my goodness, where is this guy coming from? You come up with a strategic plan. My goodness, what in the world is he thinking? I'm not talking about moral issue. I'm not talking about ethical issue. I'm just talking about certain ways of doing things. Some of you, you live with your parents, and you cannot imagine how old-fashioned your parents are. You want to ask permission, and they keep saying no, 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 and you are thinking, my goodness, what kind of fathers, where did they come from, from the prehistoric age or what? And then some of you, you are married to a husband that is also from the planet Mars, okay? You don't understand your husband. So you don't like obeying. So what do you do? Be serious. What do you do? This morning, as we continue our series on the sovereignty of God, I want to introduce something to me that's very important. And I want to share with you something that I hope will change your life forever, for the better. If you don't mind, please stand up. Let's read the Bible together. I'm going to talk about submission to authority. Everybody, stand up. Let's read this verse together. Ready? Go. Romans 13, 1. Every person is to be in subjection to the governing authorities. There is no authority except from God, and those which exist are established by God. Remain standing. Observe the following. Number one, no exception. Every person. Second, is to be in subject to the governing authorities. Why? Notice, if all authorities are from God. The Bible says there is no authority except from God. Now, whether you believe that or you don't believe it, I know what's going on in your mind. How in the world can God sanction lousy government? Well, let me remind you, when this was written, under which government were they in? Under the Roman government. Who was the emperor at this time? Nero. Who was Nero? He was the one who eventually beheaded the Apostle Paul. Nero was the one who started persecuting Christians. So let's look at this. Look at this verse. There is no authority, louder, except from God. And then he repeats. That which exists, those which exist are established by God. 
So how will you solve this problem? I don't like the government. Should I obey the government? Continue reading. Therefore, everybody read, whoever resists authority has opposed the ordinance of God. And they who have opposed will receive condemnation upon themselves. Notice the Bible repeats the principle. Submit to authority. If not, you're opposing God. This is something uh, hard to understand. And then God is saying, authority is for your protection. Do you realize a bad government is still better than no government at all? Imagine Tacloban. Imagine later. Now, we don't have the best government. But God wants you to know something. The concept of government was invented by God. And we are to pray for those in authorities. So I want to share with you a very important concept. Everybody, read this together. God is in charge. Hupo taso. What is hupo taso? That's the word for be subject to the governing authorities. What is hupo taso? It is two Greek words combined. Hupo, under, taso, authority, to fall in line. It is a military term. Hupo taso involves the following. Honor, respect for authority. It involves obedience. It involves submission, but it's a big word. It's called what? Hupo taso. Turn to your neighbor. Tell your neighbor, hupo taso. You know, I'm really tempted to just let you keep standing because I really get excited when I see you guys standing. I've been standing the whole morning, okay? But uh, some authorities are abusive, and this authority is not. So please sit down, all right? Please sit down. Now, let me share with you the idea of submission, hupotasso. Everybody, let's read this together. What is hupotasso? Everybody, submission is trusting that God is able to accomplish His will and purpose in your life through those He has placed in authority over you. In other words, biblical submission, the logic, the theology behind submission to our to authority is precisely this. Let's read that one more time. What is hupotasso? What is submission to authority? Submission is trusting that God is able to accomplish His will in your life through those He has placed in authority over you. Notice, the focus becomes God. The focus is no longer the person in authority because I know for a fact there are many people in authorities who are abusive. They take advantage of people. I know of fathers who abuse their children. Yes, many people don't like authorities. I don't blame you. Perhaps you grew up in an environment where they took advantage of you. It's painful. I know that. I sympathize with you. But you have to realize God is bigger than those over you. So look at this verse one more, look at this concept one more time. What is submission to authority? It is believing, it is trusting that God is able to accomplish His will in your life through the designated authorities over us. The focus is not the person. The focus is not you. The focus is God. That changes everything. What about rulers that are not so good? What do you do with them? Let's continue reading. Look at the context. Verse 3. Rulers are not a cause of fear for good behavior, but for evil. Do you want to have no fear of authority? Do what is good, and you will have praise from the same. In other words, a bad government is still better than anarchy. For it is a minister of God to you for good. 
If you do what is evil, be afraid. It does not bear the sword for nothing. It is a minister of God. Notice the word minister. That's exactly the same word used to describe deacons. That's the Greek word for diakonos. So ministers, government officials, are basically servants of God. How I wish the Philippine government, all the officials of this country, and some of you are here this morning, that you will understand as servants of the government, as officials of the government, they are, we are what? Servants of the Lord. We are not to lord it over people. But the truth is, most people don't understand this. When they become government officials, they forget. They are the servants of God. Let's read this together. For because of this, you also pay taxes. Rulers are servants of God, devoting themselves to this very thing. You know what God is saying? You see, the early Christians have this idea. Now that I belong to Jesus, and the government is corrupt and abusive, I don't want to pay taxes anymore. Why should I pay taxes? They steal. It's called pork barrel. With this pork barrel system, I'm not going to pay taxes. You see, that's your logic. God is saying, you honor those in authority because authorities are all established by who? God. Read the next verse. Therefore, render to all what is due them. Tax to whom tax is due. Fear to whom fear is due. Custom to whom custom is due. Honor to whom honor is due. Submission to authority. Hupotaso is from the heart. Let me give you examples how that word is used. All right? Jesus was under one of the worst abusive authority of all time. Pilate was not a good governor. So Pilate spoke to Jesus. You do not speak to me. Do you not know I have authority to release you? I have authority to crucify you? How did Jesus answer? Let's read. Jesus answered, you would have no authority over me. Unless... It had been given you from above. For this reason, he who delivered me to you has the greatest sin. In other words, we are all accountable for our behavior. But Jesus is telling Pilate, you will have no authority over me unless it was given by who? Louder. By? Louder. God. Now, let me ask you, is God in charge of human affairs? Yes or no? That's why the series on the sovereignty of God is very important for you to comprehend. Many Christians don't understand this. Your theology will impact your behavior. And God is saying, learn to hupotasso, those in authority. Now, the word hupotasso, before I explain that to you, let me give you an example. A pagan king called Nebuchadnezzar is he a good king or a bad king? Look at what the Bible says. And now I've given all these lands into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, my servant. As far as God is concerned, good kings, bad kings, God can use them, including Nebuchadnezzar. He described Nebuchadnezzar, my servant. He described Pharaoh, my servant. Is God in control, yes or no? Louder? Yes. Turn to your neighbor. God is in control. Relax. Now, look what the Bible says. Everybody, it is He, it is God who changes the times and history, dynasty. He removes kings and establishes kings. Can God remove any president of this country? Louder? No problem. Do you pray for your leaders? And that's why God tells us you pray for leaders. Pray for your presidents. Pray for your mayors. Pray for the governors. God commands us to pray for them. They are supposed to be God's servants. Look at what Peter has to say. 
First Peter chapter 2. Everybody, submit yourselves for the Lord's sake to every human institution, whether to a king as the one in authority. Now tell me, what are the human institutions God has instituted over us? First, family, parental authority. Next, husband's authority, yes or no? School authority, church authority, civil authorities. No accidents. For the sake of the Lord, God is saying, you obey. Now, what about those who are not good? Let's read this together. Servants, everybody, servants, be submissive to your masters with all respect. Not only to those who are good and gentle, but also to those who are unreasonable. My goodness. How can that be? Do you now understand why if people come to me for counsel, I tell them don't join strikes? Union, adversary against management, if you ask me, it's not the best. What if you don't like the management? My friend, you can give suggestions. You can do whatever is legally, yes or no. But the spirit of the Word of God is respect those in authority. Ladies, are you ready for this? All right. May I ask all women to read this? All married women, single women, please read this. In the same way, you wives, be submissive, hupotasso, to your own husbands, so that even if any of them are disobedient, meaning they are jerks, they are rascals, okay? If any of them are disobedient, they may be won without a word by the behavior of their wives as they observe, chase, respectful behavior. I have seen this in Shishia. Countless times, countless people. The wives came to know the Lord. The wives, was, the wives were transformed. And the man used to be, you know, so radically crazy. He saw the changes in the wife. Sooner or later, the Lord touched the hearts of the husbands. Now, ladies, I'm not saying if you are submissive, guaranteed your husband will come to know the Lord. All I'm saying is this. You are responsible to obey what God wants you to do. Look at me. You have to understand the two circles. The first circle is your circle of influence. That is within your control. You take care of that. What is within my control? Respect those in authority. Outside your circle, outside your control, your husband. Ladies, do you agree you cannot control your husband? Ah, some of you can control your husband. Okay, maybe your circle is bigger. But whatever it is, I submit to you, those that are outside your circle of control, you pray. Commit them to the Lord. But what is within your control? You be responsible. What about the leaders of the church? Let's read this together. Everybody, obey your leaders who put us to them. They keep watch over your souls as those who will give an account. Let them do this with joy, not with grief, for this would be unprofitable for you. Now, I'm not just talking about pastors. I'm talking about the designated authorities that the pastors has given. Example, small group leaders, disciples. Many of you, you believe in accountability. Yeah, yeah, I believe in accountability. I'll be part of a small group. And then you come for counseling. You know what happens? You don't like the counseling. You don't obey. That's not the spirit of the Word of God. Assers. I praise God for ushers. When ushers tell you, what do you do? Do you respect them? Or do you say, hmm, I don't know, sino, sino. You know, when ushers tell you, listen to them. You know why? Respect them by their very position. So, listen to me. From now on, CCFers, when ushers tell you, and I'm telling you now, when you come here, sit up front first. Fill up the front and the middle rows. Don't occupy the edges. You know why? It's called consideration. It's called not being selfish. Because we are selfish people. We want to choose all the best places. And poor guy who comes late, look, how will they sit? Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. I'm not beyond. Are we Christians, yes or no? Louder, yes or no? Will you respect the ushers? 
Now, are you listening to me? Next Sunday when you come, where will you sit? Let's fill up the front part. Occupy the center. Okay with you? Therefore, if you, want, if you don't want to sit in the center, then you can come late, okay? I'm just joking you, right? Now, what about the traffic enforcers? My goodness. These guys, they sacrifice their time. They sacrifice their energy. And I heard one of you, maybe not this group, I don't know, did not follow the answers. You place your car in front of the answer, and you were impolite. You want to insist on your way. You know what I tell the answers next time? Get your plate number and get a picture, and I will flush it overhead. <laughs> I believe, as believers in Christ, we should be polite. We should treat ourselves with respect, traffic enforcers with appreciation, and listen to them. Yes or no? So from now on. But you know what? 90% of you guys are wonderful but just a few. But can I tell you, this few will destroy the spirit of Christianity in this congregation. It's like how many rotten eggs do you need? So most of you, I praise God. But those of you, you know who you are, right? You don't like authorities? You know who I'm talking to? All right. You know who I'm talking to, huh? Humble yourself and say, it is God's will for us to respect those in authorities. Fathers, I'm going to warn you. If you do not learn to submit to authority, your children will copy you. And then someday you will wake up one morning when your children are teenagers already or older, then you get the shock of your life. How come they suddenly turn against me? I tell you, children turn against their parents because when they were growing up, they don't see submission at home. They are confused. You say something, but you do something else. Then they reach an age when they are no longer afraid of you. And then you, you get shocked. How come? How come? Very simple. Bad example. Bad modeling. Submit to authority. Now, I want to speak to all children. Calling, calling all children, singles, way but me. Say hi to me, children. Wave at me. All right? Let's read this together. Children, singles, everybody read this. Children, obey your parents in the Lord. This is right. Honor your father, your mother, which is the first commandment with the promise that it may be well with you, that you may live long on the earth. Notice the first commandment with the promise. To show you how important this concept of submission to authority, God said, start this at home. Teach your children to honor, respect those in authority, and obey. Why? When they grow up, they learn to submit to teachers' authority. When they grow up, they learn to submit to the authority of the employer. When they grow up, they learn to submit to the government. And then they learn Submission brings blessings. But how can they learn if you don't teach them? And that's why the first thing first, you submit to God. Teach your children to submit to God and to you. You see, the reason why it's easier for our children to submit to us is very simple. When they submit to us, they're not submitting to me. They're submitting to God, this morning I've asked my one and only beloved wife to give a testimony, an example of how hard it is to submit to authority. Let's welcome my wife, all right? Good morning. Good morning. Uh, well, well, good afternoon. I'm very excited to be here with you this afternoon. My very being on the stage this afternoon is my first example of submission to authority. Because he only told me this morning if, he, if I could speak. So, so lesson number one. Secondly, I'm carrying an umbrella. Why do we use umbrellas? For protection when it's raining. This umbrella represents authority. When we stay under the umbrella, or when we stay under our authorities, we're protected. When we don't have an umbrella in the rain, then we're we're unprotected in the same way we're unprotected when we don't stay under the authority 
uh, of, the, of those above us. So I'll give you an example. Uh, some years ago, we lived in Valley Golf. And we lived on a mountain in a house that looked over the Valley Golf Club and over Metro Manila. It was beautiful. I love the place. And my husband loves trees, so he had planted many trees around the yard, which I liked so much. And two of the trees that he planted were fire trees. Now, you know what a fire tree is, right? They're tall, they grow fast, and they have these beautiful red flowers once a year. They were planted, and they were nestled in the L of our house. We had a two-story house overlooking, as I said, Valley Golf Club. Now, those fire trees were my two favorite trees in the yard. What we had done is under the fire trees, we put the playground for the children. So we had the swing set. We had on the side, we had a sandbox. And on one of the fire trees, we had, we had tied a Tarzan vine. So our children would stand up on the playground, and they would swing out on the Tarzan vine over the sandbox. But at night, when we would walk, my husband began to develop a dislike for these two trees. Why? Because during certain seasons of the year, they have these itchy worms that grow in the trees. And also, because of the small leaves, they were taller than our house, the leaves would blow into the gutters. So he'd tell me at night, you know, Diana, I think we have to cut those trees. And I would appeal, and I would say, no, Peter, I think we should keep them because of this play set and everything. Now, this went on a number of times, and I, he would tell me to cut them, but I never listened to him. I would always make my opinion and feel it was finished. So it's called manipulation, ladies, if you don't know the better word. So one night we were having dinner in our house with a, a, a couple for, uh, that were our guest. As we were sitting in the house, suddenly it was this big crash, bang, and the whole house shook. And I was terrified. I thought, what happened? Did a bomb explode? We went out to look, and one of the fire trees had fallen on our roof and was just laying across the gutter and mashed in the gutter, when I walked out, God spoke to me. You know, he's never been easy on me, and he's taught me submission in very dramatic ways. And so he said to me, Diana, this is an example. Stop manipulating your husband, and you listen to him because I told him to cut those trees for your protection. You should have been under his authority. What if those trees had fallen on the head of your children, or what if when they were swinging on the vine, they had fallen? or what more, on your own head for being hard-headed. And so, you know, the next morning, I went down to look at the trees, and in the trees, in that tree were beetles that had gotten inside and had eaten the inside of the tree. It wasn't a strong wind that blew the trees down. It was just the beetles, and the tree just collapsed. You know what? I became very submissive to my husband. I went to Valley Golf Club. I asked him to come and bring a chainsaw and cut down the other tree also. And when we looked inside, there were bugs as well. So why do I share this story? Ladies, I'm afraid to, sub to manipulate my husband to my point of view. What do I do? If he says something that I don't really agree with or I think it's off, I'll give my opinion. It's called an appeal. But then I'm going to pray. And if my husband says, no, this is what I want to do, then I'm going to obey. Because God has taught me that authority... As I shared, remember the umbrella is for our protection. I would not have known what would have happened had I submitted. I wouldn't know the trees are going to fall. And I could have thought that I was right in keeping them. But God let me have the dramatic example of the trees falling to let me see that what will happen in that instant had I, had I not obeyed. So just to remind you, submission is for our authority, under, our, our protection under our authority. Ladies, remember the umbrella. God bless you. And gentlemen, don't abuse your authority. Just bring the umbrella, bring it to the <laughs> wife out there. Understand? Don't abuse your authority. Now, if you don't agree with your husband, what do you do? You don't agree with your father. You don't agree with your company president. You don't agree with your D group leader. And I'm not talking about ethical issues, okay? The ethical issues are no brainer. The Bible says you must obey God, not people. I suggest the word appeal. It is found in the book of Daniel, chapter 1. Daniel appealed. You give your authority a counter-proposal, something reasonable. So, example, your mom said, you cannot go out. And then, what do you do? You believe you should go. You appeal. Mom, 
may I know why you don't want me to go out? Well, because it's dangerous, it's night. Mom, may I suggest that my sister will accompany me and your friend can accompany me and they can drive me there. You see, you come up with proposal. You come up with options. Don't put those in authority in a corner. Don't say, you know, your problem, kabobo, bobo mo, stupido ka, itapat, ito gawin natin. If you do that, your attitude will let him say no immediately. Sometimes we don't know how to appeal with the right attitude. It must always be with respect and be willing to surrender. If they say no, ladies, look at me. When your husband says no, you can obey externally, but your heart is angry. Remember the saying, if mommy ain't happy, Nobody is happy. So ladies, you must submit with a will, willing, joyful heart. Okay, honey. Understand, Diana? Always like this principle. But no, I praise God. I am fortunate. I have a wonderful wife, wonderful children. Uh, she, submission, hupotaso, has to do with the attitude before the action. And ladies... You want to support your husband? Have the right attitude. Respect. What if they ask you to do something wrong? Very clear, very simple. If they ask you to do something ethically, morally wrong, against the Bible, look at what the Bible has to say. Acts 5.29. No brainer. Peter and the apostles answered, We must obey God rather than men. If your company asks you to steal, to uh, do an accounting that's illegal, to cheat, be prepared to lose your job. The midwives feared God and did not do as the king of Egypt had commanded them. Let the boys live. You see, the king issued a stupid command, a very bad command. When the boys are born, kill them. Don't let them live. No, the midwives feared God. They didn't obey the king. Look at what the Bible says. God was good to the midwives. Why? Because the midwives feared God and he established households for them. So what am I saying? Hupotaso means what? Believing, trusting that God will accomplish his will in your life through those he has appointed over you. Now when the commandment, when the instruction is illegal against the Bible, what do you do? You don't have to obey. If you have to resign, you resign from the company. Trust God. I will give you two examples from the Bible to show you how God guides us. Is God in charge, yes or no? Do you believe God is in charge of our lives? Do you believe God guides you through designated authorities, yes or no? I, I will now show you from the Bible example because it gives you a big picture. Many years ago, God told Samuel, I'm going to appoint a new king. Samuel said, who will be the new king? God said, you go to the family of Jesse. One of them is going to be the new king. So Samuel went to see Jesse. He was so excited. And then imagine you are Jesse, okay? You are Jesse. I want you to imagine now. Jesse, one of your sons is to be the future king. He will occupy Malacanang Palace. Wow, will you be excited? All right, you know what Jesse did? All right, show me your sons. He got the first one. What's his name? Eliab. You know why Eliab? He is a leader. He is a military officer. Handsome, good looking. And then Samuel looked at him. The Lord spoke to Samuel. Sorry, he's not the one. Then he made an amazing statement. God does not look at the external. He may be good looking. He may be most qualified in man's eyes, but God looks at the heart. All right. Next son, Eliab. No. No, the next one is Abinadab. Then the third one was Eliab. My goodness, he presented seven sons. Not one of them qualified. So what do you do next? You know, I have discovered something from the Bible. 
I want you to imagine now you are David, okay? This is what happened. Samuel said to Jesse, are these all the children? Dami, dami. Ano? How many? Seven. He said, ah, there's one more. The youngest. He's tending the sheep. Samuel said, bring him here. We will not sit down until he comes. Let me ask you, what was in Jesse's mind? What was in the mind of the father that he did not even bother to call his son David? Tell me. Can I tell you something? In the father's mind, maybe, Je maybe his son was totally unqualified. Impossible. You know what I'm learning? Where you are right now in your career, you work hard, and your boss does not appreciate you. Your boss does not even know your name. They don't appreciate what you are doing. Don't worry. You know why? God knows. People can forget you. Your own father can forget you. Your own family members can neglect you. But God is sovereign. At the right time, if God wants you promoted, will you be promoted? Yes or no? Don't put your confidence in yourself, in God. Work hard. They asked David to come. Now, I want to imagine now. David answered the father, I'm sorry I cannot come. I'm busy. I'm playing with my friends. I cannot go now. What would have happened? David honored the father. When the father asked him to come, he came. And the Bible tells us, right there and there. Let's read this together. The prophet took the horn of oil, anointed him in the midst of his brothers. All the brothers saw what happened. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David from that day forward. Ladies and gentlemen, most important about qualifications, future, about submission to authority, is God. My question to you is this. Are you filled with the Spirit of God? You know, most of us do not realize how important the Spirit of God is. I can never do ministry without God's Spirit. You cannot do God's work apart from His power. You want to be effective in your company, you ask God to become your senior partner. Let the Holy Spirit fill you. If you do not know what the Holy Spirit is, you come. We have Bible study. It's called GLC Level 1. We talk about the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Jesus. When you have Jesus, you learn how to be filled with the Spirit. You have the Holy Spirit. So I suggest many of you go to the Internet, learn from the Internet. We have online study about the Holy Spirit. Now, David... <coughs> was now anointed king, but that is not enough. How will God train David? You understand the problem? God wanted David to become king. How will God train him? Can I tell you how? God made sure that David will be invited to the palace. Because the king had nightmares. The king had depression. He needed somebody to play the music. And it so happened somebody heard about the need of the king. Somebody went to the king. Bossing, I know somebody who can play the music for you. I know somebody who is good. He belongs to the family of Jesse. You know what the king said? Ask his father. So the father told the son, David, are you willing? To go to Malacanang Palace. And David said, yes. Can you imagine? David was brought before the presence of the king to be his armor bearer, to play music for him. He saw firsthand how to manage the kingdom, what to do, what not to do. Is that enough to make him king? No, no, no. How will he become well-known to all the people of Israel? You want to be the president of this country, people have to know you. You want to be the king of Israel? They have to know you. Now, how will you become known to all the people? You know what God did? Listen to me now. Hupotasso. Learn to respect authority. You know what David did? Everybody read this. David was the youngest. The three oldest followed Saul. 
David went back and forth, back and forth, forth and back, forth and back, from Saul to tend his father's flock. In other words, in Tagalog, anong trabaho ni David? Messenger boy? Achoy? You know what's Achoy? In the Achoy, Achoy? No, David is a messenger. He's a runner. You know, if I were David, what, what I would tell my brothers and my father, <clears throat> excuse me, daddy, do you know I am the anointed one? I am going to be the king. Please, don't let me do this menial job. I need to go to the library. I need to study strategy. No, no, no. Aaron boy, back and forth, back and forth. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And then the dad told him, you know what? I want you to go to the battlefield. I want you to check your brothers. Bring these loaves, 10 loaves of bread. Bring it to your brother. Bring it to the commander. And report back to me what's happening. Okay, David, go. You know what David said? Dad, I'm sorry. I'm so busy. I cannot do that. Is that what David said? No. When the father said, you go, bring the bread. What did David said? Yes, sir. Who put tasso with gladness? The Bible said he went. God used that occasion to do something for David which he could have never done. You know why when he got there? Mr. Goliath was there. Mr. Goliath was challenging everybody. Can you imagine now? Goliath talking to all of us. Oh, sino magaling dyan? Labanan ninyo ako. You fight with me. If you win, we surrender to you. If I win, all of you surrender to me. We avoid bloodshed. This is a simple proposal. Oh, sino magaling dyan? Laban tayo. Ten rounds. Nobody volunteered. David was in the right place, at the right time, at the right occasion. Nobody volunteered except David. You see, God used this occasion. David had no idea what God is going to accomplish through him. He just hupotasso. The king said, okay, go ahead. The rest is history. David killed Goliath, and the whole place was... David became well-known. CNN, ANC, Twitter, Facebook. Okay, wow, sino ito? David, ang galing. But then something happened. Was David ready to become king? Yes or no? Not yet. God said, hindi pa pwede, hindi pa hinog. David was sent to the advanced school of leadership. Where is that advanced school of leadership? In the desert. King Saul became jealous. King Saul decided to kill David. David had to run. Notice, he ran. And what happened? Run. What happened? Run. Saul decided to get 3,000. Green Beret, Navy Seal, to run after David. He kept running, running, hiding. Suddenly, after so many years of hiding, running, Saul made a fatal mistake. He had to go to the bathroom. Remember the story? Walang porta toilet doon eh, wala. So, anong toilet gagamitin natin? Sabi ng mga sundala, Bossing! Lalaki ng butas, oh. So, he went to a cave. You know who was in the cave? All the soldiers said, Boss, go there. We will look this way. So, King Saul was there. But who was inside the toilet? You have no idea how dark a cave can be. My wife and I had privileges of going to visit different caves. Mammoth Cave, one of the biggest caves in Kentucky. Man, it is so dark. It can house an army inside the cave. And that was David with his men hiding inside. And you know what they told David? This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. Patayin mo na. Patayin mo na. You know what? Can you imagine the guy in the toilet doing this? Andale, patayin yun. You know what? Just get your sword. What did David do? David said, uh-uh. I will not touch 
the Lord's anointed. Hupo taso. Respect for authority. You know what happened? My goodness. A few months, maybe years later, or I don't exactly know how long, two chapters down, Saul tried to kill King David again. You see, David spoke to Saul. David said, this is what he said, okay? David said, you, you may not appreciate, but this is what David said. David said, this day your eyes have seen that the Lord has given you in my hand. Some said to kill you. But my eye had pity on you. I will not stretch out my hand against you. You see, David spared Saul. Would you believe it? After a while, the same thing happened again. Saul tried to kill David. And this time, understand, this time, David had a chance now. You know why? Because Saul was asleep. God gave Saul this amazing deep sleep. And David was right there in front of him. And his right-hand man told David, David, I know you are a good man. I will be the one to kill him. Let me kill him. What will you do if you were David? Be honest with me. All your miseries will be over, and you will become the king. You become the president, and you'll be in Malacanang. What will you do? You know what David did? He did not. He said, I will not do it. If God wants him dead, he will die. But me, I will not touch him. He is the Lord's anointed. Hupo taso. Respect for authority. You see, the crucial thing is this. You may not like your boss. You may not like whoever is the authority over your life right now. Some children don't like their parents. They are not perfect. I'm not saying we have perfect parents, but learn to honor respect. That is how you unleash God's power in your life. You know, at the right time, at the right place, at the right time, an arrow flew. Tinaman si Saul. Mortally wounded. Eventually, Saul killed himself. And the Bible tells us, David, at the age of 30, at the right time, after being matured through hardship, trials, David wrote Psalms while he was running away. David wrote beautiful scriptural truth in God's time. You want God's time? You want God's will? Look at me. I want God's will. Yes or no? I want God's best. How do you have God's best? Submit to authorities. Listen to me. 90% of God's will is revealed through His Word and His designated authorities. One more time. You want to know God's will for your life? 90% of the time. His Word and His designated authorities. You know what department you should be? You know what you should do? Check with your boss. Ladies, you want to know your will? Check with your husband. Children, check with your parents. Honor them. 90% of God's will is revealed through His designated authorities and His word. Have you heard of this guy, Joseph? What happened to Joseph? Let's read. Joseph was 17 years old. My goodness. He was pasturing the flock. Now, Joseph had a problem. Joseph brought back a bad report about them to their father. Just more so polite to Joseph. So his brothers don't like him. His brothers hated him. One day the father made a fatal decision. He asked Joseph, Joseph, will you check your brothers? Go see them. What did Joseph said? No, dad, I- I'm so busy. And dad, they don't like me. I, I don't want to go see them. No, no, no. Joseph said, the father said, Joseph, are not your brothers pasturing the flock in Shechem? Come, I will send you to them. And what did Joseph say? I will not go. Is that what Joseph said? What did Joseph say? Everybody? Who 
I will go. Turn to your neighbor. Tell your neighbor, Hupo Taso. Pronounce it properly. Hupo Taso. Meaning, honor, respect, submission to authority. Hupo Taso. Now, when he went there, he got a shock of his life. His own brothers, 11 of them, connived, decided to kill him. I want you to imagine now, tied by your brothers. They want to kill you. What will you be thinking? And then a group of businessmen came. They decided, why should we kill our brother? Let's sell him as a slave. So Joseph was sold as a slave. Now imagine now, you are Joseph, tied. You are now a slave. They brought Joseph down to Egypt. When Joseph got to Egypt, who would have bought him? Would you believe it? Potiphar. Who is Potiphar? The general of the presidential security command of Pharaoh. A very, very high-ranking officer. Was it by coincidence? Humanly speaking, you will say, Male ang tatay. Wrong advice. You should have not sent your son to visit the brothers. You should have not done this. You should have not obeyed your father. Listen to me. Many times, I don't understand why bad things will happen to good people. But God will use authority to accomplish His purpose in your life, through your life. Sometimes He gives you a hard boss to transform your character. Sometimes He gives you families that are not reasonable. Why? To mold you, to humble you. I don't know what God is always doing, but one thing I know. God has a purpose, a wonderful plan for each one of us. But it may not be good at that time. You trust Him. I want to make a long story short. Man, the Bible tells us his master, verse 3, I want you to see this part. His master saw that the Lord was with him. How in the world can your master see God in your life? Students, how can your teacher see God in your life? Ladies, gentlemen, how can people see that God is in your life? How can your helpers see? How can your neighbors see? that God is in your family? How can your boss, your office mate, see that God is in your life? Any idea? Let me tell you. You will act differently. When everyone comes late, you come early. When everyone is cursing, you don't curse. When everyone is submitting a lousy report, you give a good report. When people take advantage of helpers, you treat them very well. In other words, people can only see God in your life, in my life, and you pray for me that my life will be such that when people look at my family, they look at my life, they look at us, they will say, you know what? Something is different. I want to know what you have. I see God in your life. You know why? Maybe he was praying. Maybe before he eats. Maybe he refused to bow down to images. My whole point is this. Let your life shine. Well, I hope that was the end of the story. That's not the end of the story. The master's wife, she misses Potiphar, the other boss, gave him an amazing order. You know what's the order? Joseph, you are young, 17 years old. My boss, my husband is busy all the time. I get lonely. And at night, it's so cold. I need a companion. Joseph, can you be my best friend? In Tagalog. Alam na. What will you do if you were Joseph? Will you say, Lord, submit to authority? <laughs> you ask me to obey? Is that what you will do? No. Joseph has an amazing response. Joseph said, look at verse 9. How can I do this great evil and sin against God? 
She spoke to Joseph day after day. He did not listen to her, to lie beside her, or be with her. Did Joseph do the right thing? Obey in every area until the command is to go against the will of God. Many people conclude that the will of God is based on circumstances. Look at David. He could have said, wow, God's will. He was in front of me. God's will. Look at Joseph. God's will. The girl loves me. And man, this is God's will. No, no, no. You don't determine God's will based on circumstances only. Remember? I don't know if I share this with you. We have some members in CCF. It is God's will for me to marry him. I said, how do you know it is God's will? I talked to your father, your mother. It is God's will. Why? Well, I told the Lord, if I go to this party and this beautiful chick will wear red, and then when I will introduce myself, she will smile. That must be from God. And then the final test, if her birthday is on the same month as mine, God's will. Then the problem is this. How can it be God's will when the Bible said, do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. Do not marry somebody whose God, whose faith is not biblical, is not Jesus. Don't use circumstances as an excuse to violate the clear instructions of God. I'm not against circumstances. Sometimes God will do that. But when the circumstances will go against the clear instructions of God, it cannot be God's will. God. Brenda. Okay. Well, Joseph obeyed, and he got up. He, he did not obey the wife. What happened to him? In, what happened to him? By obeying God and disobeying Mrs. Potiphar, he ended up in jail. Now, look at me. Some of you have this idea. If I submit to God, if I obey God, I should have no problems. You know, some crazy teacher may teach that on TV. If you follow God, you live happily ever after. Everything's okay. Look at me. On the contrary, sometimes God will sacrifice your physical comfort for the sake of character transformation. In the case of Joseph, God made sure he will prepare Joseph for something greater. And what was that greater? He will learn that in this world there is injustice. He will learn that people can falsely accuse you. He will learn not to put his confidence on people. You know why? In the jail, he met somebody, the cupbearer. You know who's a cupbearer? The one who tastes the wine for the king. That guy was put in jail. But Joseph told him, you know what? You're going to get out of this. But please remember me. Please, wag mo ko kalimutan. Paglabas mo dito, once you get out of this jail, explain to the king, I am falsely accused of rape. I am not a criminal. Please change my 201 file. My reputation is shut. I am hopeless. Change. Please help me. Joseph was hopeless. His reputation was bad. You know what the cupbearer did? The Bible tells us. Very sad. The Bible says the cupbearer did not remember him. Did not remember him. But you know what? People can forget you. But our God will not forget you. Can you turn to your neighbor? Wake up your neighbor. Magising na, magising na. Hupotaso. Wake up your neighbor. Tell your neighbor. Hupotaso. You know why? Sometimes you feel God has forgotten you. Imagine Joseph in jail, in prison. Everybody has forgotten him. Everybody has forgotten him. But God did not forget Joseph. We have an amazing God. Let me ask you, how big is your God? Small or big? Louder. Big. How big? Very big. You have problems? Yes or no? Yes, of course. Big problem, small problem. 
Let's go over it one more time. You have a big God? Yes. What about your problem? Big or small? Small. If you have a small God, you have a big problem. My goodness. A small God means big, big problem. Joseph had a big God. God gave Pharaoh a nightmare, a dream he cannot interpret. And then the cupbearer suddenly remembered, Boss, forgive me. I forgot. There was a boy, a young man named Joseph. By this time, Joseph was no longer a boy. By this time, the Bible tells us he was 30 years old. And when the king asked him, the king said, Joseph, I will now promote you on the spot. The on the spot promotion. You will now be the prime minister of this entire kingdom, the kingdom of Egypt. In this country, no one is higher than you except me. And nobody can enter this country or leave this country without your approval. My goodness, Joseph must have been shocked. Wow, I am now what? The prime minister of Egypt. My goodness, the Bible tells us Joseph was 30 years old. Let's close this message. Very simple. How do you know God's will for your life? Hupotaso. Say that with me. Hupotaso. Hupotaso means what? Respect. Honor. Those in authority. From the heart. And the secret of honoring those in authority, you must see God behind every authority. You must see the hand of God. I have a big God. Years ago, I proposed to the board of CCF a proposal to buy the condominium right beside San Francisco. It was offered to us at a ridiculously low price, amazing term, and I told the board, this is for us. We are in St. Francis, and we can expand prime property. You know what the board did? We met, and they did not like my idea. And I was telling them, in my mind, of all the board members, we have bankers, we have marketing people, we have presidents. But when it comes to property development, <coughs> I'm supposed to be the expert, okay? President for a company, I have a developing company, I develop subdivisions, properties. They should listen to me. But I did not say that, okay? But in my mind. Mga hindi marunong ito. But you know, God taught me a lesson years ago about submission to authority. You see, years ago, my father warned me, do not invest in this stock. I was still under my father. I did not listen to him. I invested all my money in one particular stock. I lost everything. I learned submission to authority is for my protection. So this time, we now have a big church. We were having meetings. What did I do? Praise God. I did not put my weight, place my weight. I am the senior pastor. You listen to me. No, no, no. I submitted to the authorities, the board. You see, in CCF, we have check and balance. I respect our board. I listen to them. Can I tell you? Because I listen to them and did not expand there. We are where we are today by the grace of God. At the right time, at the right place. No borrowing, no debt. What's my point? Do you want God's best for your life? God's will, God's way, God's time is equal to God's best. How do you do that? Hupo. God will accomplish His will and purpose in your life, through your life, through authorities. Let's bow our heads and pray. Some of you may be struggling. You don't understand 
what's happening to you. You feel it is unfair. Can I tell you something? God is in charge. In fact, as your heads are bowed down, have you ever thanked the Lord for your problems? Have you ever made a decision that from now on you will learn to submit to God's designated authorities in your life? You see, ladies and gentlemen, you will not submit to human authorities until you surrender to God's authority. And some of you have never surrendered your life to Jesus. You have never trusted Him. I want to pray for you that you will surrender your life to Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Trust Him. Then you can follow those in authority. Pray something like this. Lord Jesus, I have never surrendered my life to you. I have never ever committed my life to trust you. Today, I surrender my life to you. I will trust you. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. I will trust you not only as my Savior. I will trust you as my Lord. I will follow you. In Jesus' name we all pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, I'm going to give you a bonus. To those of you who are Christian, just read this verse as we close. Everybody read this verse. Please read that verse. As for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good. Notice, people can mean evil against you. Bad plans, they are responsible for hurting you. But behind all of those pain, the Bible says, you meant evil, but God what? Meant it for good. You see that verse? You meant evil, but God meant it for good. Have a nice day. Hupo Taso. Let's all stand up. Worship our God. He is holy and he is in charge. Thank you.
is 